discussions with five notable women in South Florida's construction industry. This is a five part series being produced for Women in Construction Week 2022. My name is Deborah Hampton and I am the Risk and Safety Director for Current Builders. I'm also the first Vice President of the South Florida Chapter of the Associated General Contractors of America. I will be President of our chapter, the first female president in two years for the 2024 term to 2025. It's an honor to be able to serve as a host for this interview series. The goal of Women in Construction Week is to highlight women as a viable component in the construction industry. But most importantly, I hope it encourages more women to become part of this exciting industry. I'm pleased to say that I'm joined today by Patricia Bonilla, who is the president of Lunacon Construction Group, a Florida Hispanic women-owned organization. Patricia began her career as a project engineer, quickly becoming a project manager, and eventually becoming the head of the city of Fort Lauderdale's construction division. In 2007, Patricia decided to take a leap of faith and actually start her own construction firm working out of her garage. Despite starting her construction company during significant economic challenges, Patricia succeeded, completing 250 projects serving federal, municipal, and private clients. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. It's our pleasure. Patricia, and, I do have a and, question for you. May I congratulate you for your nomination? That's oh. a... Thank you. That's, that's Thank a very, you very, very, very good accomplishment, and I'm glad you're being recognized. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Um, well, I, I have a question for you um, to start this off. So this is this is a huge challenge for anybody starting a business, but especially during a significant economic downturn like we experienced in the 2007 period of time. Um, so what made you decide to start off on your own? When I, when I was working for the city of Fort Lauderdale, uh, that, that probably was, that, that time was 17 years ago, 17 years before I started, I had already acquired experience working for multi-million uh, dollar construction companies. And then I worked for the city for about three years. But in that term, during that time, I had plans or I wanted to have my own company. I just never made the step. There was always a story around why not. But back then, you know, it became pretty painful not to be close to my kids. I was a single mom with three kids, and uh, and that threshold just began, just 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 rise, and, and it was just unbearable. I was driving about a hundred miles from my home to to work back and forth, and they were just far away. I I didn't have family here in in the United States. So whenever there was an emergency or something happening, I was too far. And just the guilt was so big, that pain grew so much that it gave me the courage to start. You know, I felt God said to me, literally, it's time to, it's time to do this. And yes, I knew the economy was bad and that I was going to step on faith on, on without anything. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a project. You know, people were telling me, are you crazy? You know, you have a responsibility with your kids you know, blah, blah, blah. And I still did it anyways, because the, the, the comfort of staying where I was or, at, or, or the comfort of my financial situation was not big, was not, was smaller than the pain I had for not being close to them. And, and maybe, you know, it's a woman thing, but you know, when you have an outcome and the kids have that place in your heart, you do whatever it takes to make them, uh, to see them through fruition and see them going to where they need to be. That's a great story, family first. And obviously you're a very courageous woman. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've you. needed that courage throughout your career. So not only um, do we have challenges being in the construction industry and many of the women that we've been interviewing have, have spoken to those challenges, but you also have the challenges not only being in the construction industry, but as a business owner. So can you talk, talk to us a little bit about some of those greatest challenges that you've had and how you've been able to overcome them? So you're right, you're right. there's been a, a lot of challenges and I compare having a company, a, a small business to having kids. 
when you have kids, at least in my case, you have them and they're like an earring. You don't let them lose. You don't change them. You don't replace them. You, you know, you have a vision of what you want with your kids. Same thing with a company, you have a vision. And that vision does not allow, at least in my case, giving up and, and, and starting all over again. And so for me, the challenges have been in multi-directions. It's been related about funding. I started in the garage, so I did not have tons of money in the bank. I did start in the recession. There was no work here in Miami. So I, I, I got creative and I started looking for work outside of Miami. And, and basically having divine guidance for me has been the North. It's been challenging. There's been probably the biggest challenge has been when, when you do your work and, and it's hard to get paid. I, I think it's one of the biggest challenges because you if you don't get paid, then your subcontractors don't get paid. And so it is being harder here, down here in South Florida, believe it or not, that, than when we work for federal governments. In federal, and we travel, right? We work in Puerto Rico, we work in multiple states. And it's, it tends to be easier depending on, on the client. Other challenges have been related to developing culture and, employ, and, and, and hiring the right person. When you start a company, you don't hire thinking like that, you hire whatever and you know what you can, what you can afford, or you don't have that conscious. But when you go through issues, now you wanna, you realize how important people are and how important your focus needs to be. So changing that approach was very, was, was challenging because you know, as you have projects that have certain type of person that maybe they don't, they don't match your culture anymore, then you have, you can't just replace them, right? And, and, and then developing a, in, in a different organizational structure where you can now have more accountability, more processes. So the challenges are in different aspects in general. The important thing here is to know that it is challenging, right? It's like when you're raising a kid, you don't know where, are they, where is the pain coming from? But you know that you're no matter what, you're gonna find a way. So challenging, I guess, is not giving up. <laughs> when you want to give up, you don't give up. <laughs> well, obviously you're, you've been able to overcome a tremendous amount of challenges. So can you share with us a little bit about what your strongest assets are that have, been, that have allowed you to overcome these challenges and be such a successful businesswoman? So I have done a lot of work on myself and, and, uh, and personal growth. And now that you ask that question, it's a very good question. You know, obviously assets, the assets that I'm going to talk to you about are not the ones that you put in a balance sheet, right? For me, it's been more about resilience, you know, being resilient and knowing that whatever comes, there's always a way. I do have a strong faith. And when I have a challenge, a big challenge that I believe is bigger than me in, the, in that moment, I think when I started the company, how connected I was with my divine. And I remember that it was in my heart, it was the right thing to do. So I know there's, there's a way, you know, right? there's a way. And, and challenges, um, my biggest asset is probably my mindset. My, the level of gratitude that I have for, for my life, being in love with life, being grateful to who I am and who I can become, being able to ask questions, you know, I, if this is where I want to be, who do I need to be? Who do I need to become as a leader? You know, probably one of my assets is, it's, uh, it's grace, knowing that I grace, life happens for me that it's not a big, I'm not a victim of my circumstances. You know, I wish you could put that in the balance sheet, but you can't. <laughs> That's true, but that, that, was, that was very articulate. And you're obviously such a phenomenal woman. If, if you had the opportunity to, to address everyone in this audience that was a young woman that might be considering construction as a career or, or maybe not even having the thought of an opportunity in the construction industry, what would you like to say to them? 
Well, I would say that this is a really good moment to enter in this industry because it's hard to find people. So that's one thing. So if you want to have a career that you want to develop yourself as a professional and, and earn a really good income, so this is this is one. The other thing is that this, this industry needs disruption. We are, in my opinion, in an obsolete industry. It, it hasn't really changed much from the way we do business. And I believe having a, a diverse audience, that diverse Diversity, not only in, uh, in gender, right, but also the youth, bringing in new, new, new people on how to, do, how to do this different. We're in an era where the world is changing in front of us. We're not going to do business the same way. As, as much as we sometimes you hear comments about pe people in the industry saying that young people don't want to work, you know, I just think there's a different paradigm. And, uh, and bringing, if you want to be part of a change, that could be exciting. This, this is a great industry. This industry for me has been uh, a responsible or, or an enabler for the, the development of my character even more. Just like my kids, you don't give up on something, right? So if you're in this industry, this is, this is a great way to transform into and transform an industry that affects so many. Construction touches so many. The, the government is about to release $1.3 trillion to this industry. The industry needs people. The industry needs change. So this is a perfect opportunity for new blood, new way of thinking to come and collaborate with the people that have all the experience in the world and maybe in, the, in our industry and, and between the, the two eras, create something better. So to me, we're... It, it could be a great combination. How to do it better and faster, I guess, with the traditional way we do business. I love your perspective and positivity. Patricia, it has been such a pleasure speaking with you today. And I want to wish you continued success with your business. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you.